Have you heard? And that's the story of how I got to start playing City Skylines 2 about a month ago. Yeah, I've been given access to City Skylines 2 early and I have been diving in as often as possible, trying to learn how it all works so that I might bring you basic, straightforward tutorials to get you off on the right foot at release. But this video isn't about tutorials yet to come, it's about what you want to know now. So let's answer some of your questions, shall we? This question from Tuomas Leone feels like a good start. Did you feel at home in City Skylines 2 or did it feel like a new game from a new developer? Before directly answering this, let's establish a couple points. In this video and with my responses, I am genuinely aiming to be as neutral as possible with my emotion, but it's worth noting that I have a generally positive outlook on cities and respectively Colossal Order. I naturally avoid negativity and I see the big picture of needing to appeal both to the more hardcore audience as well as bringing a wide appeal to casual players. And for transparency's sake, I will say that I am not being paid by Colossal Order or Paradox to make this video or respond to these questions. This is just me being a goober. TLDR, TLD. L, T L D W. I love this game, but I'm trying my best to look at it neutrally for you. Okay, the actual question, did I feel at home in CS2 or did it feel like a different developer's game? Yes. <laughs> uh, fired it up for the first time, played in the non-sandbox mode, went to put down my first road and I was feeling nervous. Everything looked different graphically. I felt a little off, but I am an incredibly anxious person. Then as soon as I went to like click, then click to place the road, that was it. I was home. From there, it was just comfortable gameplay. Place road, zone the thing, place the service, repeat. But as I did this more and I got a bit more confident with it, the city grew and I started to realize, oh, this thing is different and has an actual mechanic now. Oh, I have to think about where I put that because this might happen. Oh, this mechanic is also tied to that info view and does this other thing. It did start to feel more like a paradox game where there is a lot going on. There have been a spare few times where I've begun to get frustrated that I don't understand why something's happening or how to make a process the most effective, but that does not constitute panic on your part. I promise. Until these dev diaries started releasing, I didn't have any deep insight into the mechanics outside of what the game provides. And even without them, once I slowed down, took a breath and just went with my instincts and plotted on building, things were worked out in the end. With regards to the balance suggested in this question of old versus new in CS2, I genuinely think I wouldn't want it any other way than it is. Puck Dudes Hockey is asking about differences. I assume they saw in footage of $2.20's city and my own noting a button has changed. I think I'm able to be clear that at least any of the footage of the city I built was not captured by me. I built the city on my own and sent the save files to Claw order paradox for them to open up and manipulate it as needed and capture footage on their own terms. I would be willing to bet it's the same for $2.20, but of course I don't know for sure. This is an opportunity to point out that City Skylines 2 is still being actively worked on and updated. I wouldn't be surprised if previous footage of New Dollarton was captured on an earlier release than more current footage of Rectangle and we can remember that when we're measuring our excitement, right? All right, next up, PX Lair says, I don't really care for the management aspect of City Skylines 1, is it better in CS2? It's difficult to tell what you mean by better, but I'm guessing you prefer less management over more. I think the best way to respond to this one is to call back to my first answer. It does feel like you can get through City Skylines 2 and probably well enjoy it without bogging down and micromanaging, but at its core, it's a management game. I'd guess if you don't want any management or think the original Cities game has too much of it, you won't find Cities Skylines 2 to be an improvement on that. But 
that makes the opposite true as well. If you were hoping for more management to City Skylines 2, more actual gameplay mechanics and ways to have influence over your city, I think you'll be quite pleased, as I am. Vaddy Critchy S is CS2 the same, but improved OCD paradise in terms of color coding and transport system development, or has it become more complex and overwhelming? I don't have firsthand experience with the chronic, often dehabilitating disorder that is obsessive compulsive disorder, but I've read that it causes those who have it to gain no pleasure from their behaviors or rituals, only a possible slight relief from parts of their anxiety, making your mention of a paradise a little confusing. However, I do enjoy keeping tiny transit lines and being able to change their color and name in the original city skylines was lovely. Has this been improved or become more complex? Yes, <laughs> but honestly, I would say without the overwhelming part, as long as you didn't find the original city's system overwhelming. It feels very familiar to set up public transportation in the sequel. A main addition is the waypoints shown in the third dev diary. And I think it's an example of something being made technically technically more complex, but in a digestible way and a beneficial way. Moving to 88 D bars question. How good are the new commercial or industrial residential buildings? Talking about graphics and details. What you've seen in the trailers and feature highlights is also what I'm working with. My perspective may be a bit different than expected in that I actually really enjoyed the cartoony aspect of City Skylines 1. It made it feel very much like a video game rather than the big scary real world that sometimes I just want to escape. So when I loaded up CS2 for the first time, even though I anticipated more realism, it still took me a moment or two to get used to it. So players are definitely getting more realism than the original, but I think that part is obvious already. As far as details go, I suspect Colossal Order has done the very tricky work of balancing the level of detail that we all want with it being able to actually run on computers built for the general public. It can be good to remember that while many of us have 64 gigs of RAM for all the assets we download in Cities 1, that's not a normal amount of RAM to have for casual gamers. The same can be said for other PC components, of course, I'm just pointing out RAM because it's easy. I think the graphics in City Skylines 2 are great. I also think that there will be those people who will complain about them because they don't understand that they are a small, extremely passionate group of people in a much larger, generally casual audience for the game. Am I doing all right with these answers? I guess this is the part where I tell you to give the video a thumbs up if you're enjoying it and find my insight valuable. Okay, Amsterdam and Co. and Enrique Sarayeva have the same questions about what it looks like when buildings are being built. I'll put the video from a recent feature highlights on screen. I don't know if this is the final animation, but safe to say everything we've seen has been different than the first game. There is also this tweet from the Colossal Order account confirming this and this other tweet specifying that plopped buildings specifically are instantly built. A big noop 2960s question. Can you talk about the progression at all? Is population not taken into account at all? How do you get XP and development points? Will speedrunning still be possible with this progression system? I'm so excited about speedrunning, but I can't really say much on this as it hasn't been discussed proper in a developer diary yet. I'm guessing that's coming with the August 28th game progression dev diary. What I can do, however, is post specific sections of video that have been released already and let you come to your own conclusions from them. And I can say that progression feels different now but in a good way, I think. I feel like City Skylines 2 is going to have a lot of replayability that involves making different choices for your city, resulting in different growth paths, which means different structures or services used in different ways. All of that stuff is really quite exciting. And then speed runs? I am going to need some folks a heck of a lot smarter than I to figure out the best strats from the wealth of options we will have. The path from a population of zero to Megalopolis can have quite a few branches 
now as well as challenges. So it's going to be a lot more than just draw grid, zone, place paradox, plazas, repeat. And now we have different tools like that grid auto builder duber, which will help the process. But some changes that hinder it, like how zoning, a new type of zoning over top of existing zoning removes the existing type, which will change how we try to zone quickly. I don't know, exciting stuff. Maybe I will try a speed run after recording this. Extreme Vegan asks, how stripped down does the base game of two feel compared to one with the DLC? Trying to look at this question neutrally. There are elements that have been kept from DLCs for sure, and I'm so appreciative for them. Obviously the day night cycle, snowfall stuff, we saw a bit of industries recently. We have pedestrian roads, so they haven't just stripped the game back to what the base game was in City Sky. Lines one. There are parts though that do feel missing. You can see these answers from Avanya on the Paradox forum that talk about how airports will work, which doesn't feel like what we had with the airports DLC, for example. I see people often comparing cities to The Sims, where Maxis and EA remove all sorts of content when they publish a new game and republish that content as paid TLCs, but there are some stark differences between the two games. The four main Sims games released in 2000, 2004, 2009, and 2014, so a few years between each, with almost all paid DLC removed each time, as far as I understand. City Skylines was released eight years ago, desperately needs the benefit of an updated engine, and we are definitely getting an improved sequel with direct inspiration for mechanics of that sequel taken from DLCs from the first. Colossal Order has also always been transparent about how they want their game to work, a solid foundation first to be able to expand in different ways where players can pick and choose which DLC they buy and through that customize their own game experience. It absolutely feels like the base game is larger with more content and stuff for us to do than the previous base game. Game, it feels like they've left a lot of room to add new DLCs and have mentioned a few times in tweets or on the forums. Let's see what the future brings. So who knows, maybe we'll get free updates as well, like we did with City Skylines 1. For now, it feels like City Skylines 2 will keep me occupied and satisfied for a good while using components of CS1 DLC as part of it. After that ramble, let's get to user hyphen WQ9 MW2XZ3J, who asks, did you try to make longer and multiple bus lines or tram? Isn't it annoying to have to double place once for the stops and another time for the line stopping? Okay. I've just gone back in to give this another go to be able to answer this better. And yes, it's definitely different. I'm tempted to say it could get a little tedious, but I think the benefit that comes with it is going to end up being worth it. I've rarely used buses in City Skylines 1 because I find they can cause traffic problems as often as they fix them. This is because they take a very direct path between their stop and it's often like right through major intersections or even over highways. With these new waypoints, we can avoid that and we have so much more control. I think a lot of us have been asking for more control over the city and direct ways to affect what happens in it. This sort of double placement of stops is that. Having more control requires more clicks, so we end up with this. I do think over time, the benefit will outweigh the cost. The Carl Brink asks, what other feature are you most excited about? Without being able to talk about unannounced game features, it's tough to answer this. I think instead I'll show you the image of the planned dev diaries and say that I'm struggling to choose which I'm most excited for between economy and production, citizen simulation and life path, and game progression, each releasing one after another in August. Be sure to subscribe to my second channel, Toad2. Link is in the description where I'm posting my in-depth thoughts about these developer diaries and what I think they are saying between the lines. But yeah, those three are standing out to me as so much hype. Next up, Panic497 says, there are multiple vehicles models to change on the different transportation modes. How many? I found five screenshots 
thoughts of similar questions being answered by the Colossal Order account on Twitter or Avanya on the Paradox forums. And it seems like the CO branded vehicles that we're seeing in some of the footage are the reward for finding the encrypted code from the recent CS1 update and redeeming it on their site. We also see confirmation of no additional train models other than what we've seen and a hint that there is theming involved in these vehicles. So we'll find out more late this month. These other two answers from the forums seem to suggest that there aren't additional options to choose from outside of the CO branded ones, but I can't confirm that 100%. Tyler Gorsney 8499 says, in CS1, I liked how parks, airport, zoo, and uni DLC worked and from what I've seen in CS2 it seems that they have moved away from this with modular buildings. So it seems like now in CS2 you plop a building and modularly expand it which means I can no longer build custom layouts for airports, uni campuses, etc. I find this very very disappointing your thoughts from your experiences. If the modularity that we've seen is the most of what we're getting with regards to the customizability that we had with campus and airports, for example, I will also miss especially campus. Airports was great too, but campus and park life let us bring so much of our own design and creativity to building. And I will also miss that quite a bit. Trying to put an optimistic take on things. My hope is that this is another case of Colossal Order laying the foundation and that they have something planned to bring us what we're looking for. They've been so good to us in plenty of other ways, so I'm trying to hold out judgment on this, but I get it. I do. I want to be able to decorate and place buildings on purpose. I have found I'm able to kind of express my creativity still in the new game, but it takes a bit of thought and willingness to try out the tools made available. I have a good answer for Greg Burr 5464 who says, and hopefully they get rid of riderless motorcycles. See this answer from Avanya on the Paradox forums. They're aware of the riderless motorcycle and they're just a part of development. I'm confident we will see riders soon enough. Joao Rosario asks, is the game fluid? In some shots, it seemed kind of laggy. I may sound like a broken record, but any bits you see in these trailers is recorded on a version of the game that isn't final. And I'm still holding trust that Colossal Order wouldn't deliver us a game that wasn't up to a certain standard. Playing the versions that I've played on has felt generally fine. Using the actual mechanics of the game has felt especially smooth, like placing roads, buildings, clicking through the info views, that sort of thing. You know how nowadays in City Skylines 1, when you unlock a milestone, it takes literally four seconds, we've timed it during speedruns, to load the milestone page? I can't think of anything in City Skylines 2 that compares to that. Okay, we have Sashab5154 asking, are there bikes or did they completely leave them out? Makes me so sad to think it's a car centric game. Avanya has also confirmed no bicycles at release which leaves the door open for them to be added later, either as paid or free update. I would be genuinely, genuinely surprised if bikes never found their way back into the game. Domaher 956 asks, is there sandbox mode? Check out this still from a recent feature highlight. You can see unlock all and unlimited money are options once again. And deoxyplasmic with agricultural zoning? Check out this footage from a recent feature highlight. Looks like agriculture to me, the company almost meat producing vegetables. Love it. I'm sorry. I don't know what else you were really hoping to have answered from this. So hope this helps. Next up, Hambaku7318 asks, are there contention walls that do not require water to be placed? They're being described as cut and fill roads in City Skylines 2. Even what we used to know as keys have been confirmed to not be in the game, instead opting to use the fill mode with roads for it. The same can be said for retaining walls, you use a road to do it. My experience with using it as a retaining wall or key has been one of trial and error, a little bit of patience, uh, but eventually 
eventually getting used to it. I find it pretty natural to have the cut and or fill options present when I'm toggling through heights for roads. I think the transition to using this cut and fill option for keys and retaining walls may bring a few small growing pains for some, but this is another time that I think the trade-off is totally worth the reward. We learn how to use a new tool and get used to its controls, and in return, we can put these walls anywhere and have less clutter in our menus. A good choice, in my opinion. I'm going to do my best with this question from Adriana Galisa 8190 who says, Bom dia, uma pergunta sobre vias com tuno será visível dentro deles? Poder dirigir em câmera de primeira pessoa dentro deles? They are asking if the insides of tunnels will be visible and will there be first person camera driving through them? Olá, Adriana. Favor veja esta imagem. Você pode orar dentro dos túneis, mas não pode dirigir carros. We can see Avania confirming that tunnels will be rendered, but we cannot drive the cars like you could in City Skylines 1 on some consoles. We're almost through these from Immortal Cheese. Is it good? So good. And finally, Lisan says, I'm so excited for CS2. Me too. 